Hey now, so in this video, I'm going to walk you through how we can use Zapier to send data from Airtable, in this example, real estate listings, to Webflow CMS, and then back to Airtable so we can get the Webflow collection ID. The reason why we're going to need the Webflow collection ID is that after that, I'm going to show you how we can also delete those Webflow CMS items from Airtable once they're either sold or off the market. So here we are in the collection settings of our real estate website. And before I continue, I just want to say thanks to the fine folks over at Flowbase for this amazing clonable. So as you can see here, all of our fields are typical for what you'd expect on a real estate website. We have a name, images, address, bedrooms, bathrooms, etc. So what I did was I went ahead and created a base in Airtable. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I didn't match every field into our Airtable base, just enough to show you the process on how to connect it through Zapier to make a CMS item. If this was a real project, ideally you would want to have every field represented in your base. So now that we are in our Airtable base, we're going to make a dummy listing. So I live in Los Angeles. Let's have some fun with this one. So let's say our address is 2800 Blue Jay Way because we are living in the Bird Street. And for the attachment, I found this really great photo on Unsplash by this really great photographer, Taylor Simpson. Links to her social media will be in the description. Be sure to check her out. She really does a really amazing work. So we're going to attach that photo. And once again, thank you, Taylor. So now that that's added in, we're going to go bedrooms. And this is in the Bird Street, so it's going to be five bedrooms, five bathrooms, availability, yes. Now, the availability, this is going to come in handy later on when it comes time to delete the CMS item through Airtable. And then we have our record ID. The record ID is our Airtable record ID. And if you're not sure how to get that, what you do is you create a field. And in the field type, you're going to go to formula and type in record ID. So, so once you hit rec, it comes up, your record ID, hit save, and it comes up. The next column is going to be our Webflow collection ID. That's what we're going to get after we send it to Webflow. It's going to be the ID number that comes back. That will also come in handy later on when it comes time to delete it from the Webflow CMS. So we have our sample record set up. Now we're going to create a Zap in Zapier and send it to Webflow. So we're going to head over to Zapier and we're going to make a Zap. So the event that's going to initiate the zap is Airtable. And our event is a new record. Going to connect it to our account. And to the corresponding base. And so far, our only table is listings. So we're going to select listings and hit continue. And then we're going to test it. And it found our record 2800 Blue Jay Way. That is correct. Going to continue. And now the action we want is we want to create a live item in Webflow. So we're going to hit Webflow, create a live item. Continue, connect it to our Webflow account. And the collection we want in this case is properties. So now comes the time where we map our Airtable 
columns to the appropriate fields in Webflow. So first thing is going to be the property image. And now if this is your first time using Zapier with Airtable, um, when you first select an image, it can be kind of confusing because it's going to bring up a lot of metadata. So you want to make sure when you go for the image that you're choosing the right one. And you know that because it's going to have the .jpg at the end. So this one right here, attachments URL seems to be the right one. It has the .jpg. So we're going to select that one. And we'll also have it as our main image. We'll skip the gallery for now. Address 2800 Blue Jay Way. Bedrooms. We'll just search for it. Bathrooms. We'll skip the size, garage, and date, and price tag. Availability, we'll map it to Airtable. Go to Custom. ID number, we'll map it to our record ID. Name 2800 Blue Jay Way. We'll skip the slug, you'll make it automatically in Webflow. Archive false, draft false. Hit continue. And now we're going to test it by sending it to Webflow. So it says the item was sent to Webflow just now. Let's refresh. And boom, there it is. However, we're not done yet. We have to send that record back to Airtable to get the collection ID. So we're going to go back to Zapier, add the plus, back to setup. And our third action is going to be Airtable. And our event is we're going to update record. Continue. Once again, map it to our account. And the appropriate base. Okay, so our record is we're gonna map it to the record ID. So we'll go to custom and Airtable, record ID. And we'll also map it to the name 2800 Blue Jay Way. And we'll skip all the way down to where it says Webflow. And here we will map it to the Webflow collection item. So we'll go to 2, create live item in Webflow. See all options. Scroll down to ID. And then continue. And now we will test it. It says the record was sent to Airtable. And there is our Webflow collection item ID ending in 154. Let's double check. One five four. So boom, that part works. We are now going to turn on the zap. And there it is, the first part is done. So now when we update our Airtable with a new listing, it will automatically be sent to Webflow and then back to Airtable with the Webflow collection ID. 
Now for the next phase, we're going to delete that Webflow collection item when it comes time to either take it off the market or if it sells, all through our Airtable database. So I've gone ahead and added a couple more listings to our Webflow CMS. And now what we're going to do in this step is we're going to be able to delete these CMS items all while never having to leave our Airtable database. So in order to set this up, we're going to go back to Airtable. And as you can see, where our availability column is all checked, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new view. So we're going to go to views and we're going to create a new grid view. And we're going to name this off market. You could name it whatever you want, whatever is appropriate to your database. And as you can see, all of them appear because we haven't filtered any of them yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to filter. We're going to add a filter and we're going to add where available is unchecked. And as you can see, none of them populate because all of them are still available. So we're going to go back to all of our listings. And for this example, we're going to uncheck 2800 Blue Jay Way. So as soon as we uncheck that listing, we're going to go back to off market. As you can see, it appears here. So now that we have a listing that is off the market, we're going to go set up our Zap and Zapier. Now, in order to do this, it's going to require a webhook. Now, unfortunately, using the webhook feature in Zapier, along with the multi-step Zap we did in the previous section, the previous step, will require a subscription with Zapier. So unfortunately, you will need to pay in order to have this Zap running at all times. However, if you did want a trial in order to learn how to do this, I highly recommend doing that. And that is one way of doing it for the time being. So back to the tutorial, we're going to go to Zapier and we're going to make a new Zap. Once again, our starting event is Airtable. And our event this time is when a new record is in view. Hit continue. Once again, map it to our account. And the appropriate base. And the view this time is going to be our new view, which in this case is off market. So select off market and hit continue. We're going to test it. And there is our record, our 2800 Blue Jay Way. Hit continue. And now here comes the fun part of doing the API call. So for our action, we're going to do webhook by Zapier and our event is custom request. And don't worry if you've never done an API call before, this is probably going to be the easiest API call you will ever do. It only requires one line of JSON code. So we're going to hit continue. So now we're going to set it up. Our method for this one is going to be delete. And for URL, we're going to have to go to the developer's website for Webflow and get the URL of the collection. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to that developer's website, which is developers.webflow.com and go to the section on removing collection items. So as you can see here in this example request, this URL here is what we're going to put in that section, the HTTPS dot api.webflow.com collection. However, this is just a generic URL for the collection ID and the collection item ID. What we're going to need to do is get our collection ID and our collection item ID number and put that into this URL. So we're going to copy this URL. And 
paste it in. So now we're going to go back to our collection settings and get our collection ID. And copy it in, paste it in, excuse me. And then for the item ID, we're going to get that from the column in Airtable we used to get the Webflow collection ID number, which is why that step was so important in the previous step. So we're going to delete this sample item ID number and map it to the Webflow ID number in our database. Webflow, there it is. Great, so now we have our URL set up. Uh, data pass through defaults to no on Zapier. We're going to leave that as is. So we're going to select false. And now for data, this is where the JSON code comes in. So you're going to go back to that developer's website and where it says example JSON response, we're going to copy that, all of that, and paste it in. Skip unflatten, skip authentication, and now headers is where we're going to enter in some more information. So, so we're going to go back to the developer website, and we're going to get these authorization codes, if you will. So the first one is the authorization bearer. We're going to copy that in. Authorization. And then that authorization is bearer. And this long line of, of code is the API key. So we're going to have to get that through our project settings. So I've already gone ahead and copied mine to a notepad. So I'm going to pause the video here to go copy and paste that. So I've gone ahead and pasted in my API key into that bear token. And so we need to add two more headers. The next one is going to be the version. So we're going to go back to the developer website, copy this accept version. And it is 1.0.0. And the last header we need is we need to indicate that this is JSON code. So add one more. And it doesn't have it on the delete collection item, but if we scroll down, the next one has a content type. We're going to copy that content type. And it's application slash JSON. Paste it in. And hit continue. And now here comes the moment of truth where we test. A request was sent to webhooks by Zapier. So we're going to refresh our webflow. Go to the CMS and 2800 was deleted. So back to Zapier and we're going to turn on that Zap. So there you have it, how to create a CMS item in Webflow and then delete that item all while never having to leave your Airtable database. I hope this tutorial helped. And if it did, be sure to hit the like button and thanks for watching.